your host, Jimmy Carr. Hello and welcome to 8 Out of 10 Counts, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, 25% of people do their weekly online shop whilst in bed? I do. It helps me remember what we need. Meat, two veg, dumplings, a couple of baps. <laughs> 83% of British people admit to stealing something from a hotel room. I stayed in a hotel the other day. I decided to throw caution to the wind, open up the mini bar, and I downed all the bottles of bubbly. And then I woke up and realised I was in a travel lodge and all the shampoo had disappeared. 30% <laughs> of Brits think it's acceptable to answer the phone during sex. It happens. Mum, it's for you. <laughs> right, let's get started. Did you know, for example, by 2030, 26 million Brits will be obese? Did you know if they all jumped up and down at the same time, they might lose a little bit of bloody weight? <laughs> the average woman loses her virginity at 17. How's about that, then? <laughs> and 70% of men don't get enough fibre in their diet. Tough s***. <laughs> the Tory party conference, David Cameron and Boris Johnson have been described as frenemies, although I prefer to think of them as frassoles. <laughs> the Tories say you'll now be able to attack burglars in your own home. If you ever try and burgle me, you're going to meet these two fellas. Please don't hurt me. <laughs> but in other news, Freddie Starr has denied any involvement in the Jimmy Savile scandal, but these allegations risk leaving Freddie's reputation completely unchanged. <laughs> And Cheryl Cole has revealed she needed vitamin jabs in her bum to cope after Ashley Cole's infidelity. I don't know if the jabs worked or not, but can I just say to Cheryl Cole's doctor, high five. <laughs> Only 16% of people are regularly embarrassed by their partner's behaviour. Walking in on someone on the toilet is embarrassing. I'm so sorry I'm late. <laughs> Did you know, for example, 16% of women say they lie about their age from time to time, and those times are between the ages of 28 and 53. 40% of men would rather be single than bald. So, finally, some good news for Justin Lee Collins. <laughs> and 23% of people think they're more productive when they work from home. I know I am, but that's because I'm a self-employed erection checker. <laughs> but in other news, former Bosnian Serb leader Radovan Karadic is on trial for orchestrating genocide. Bad enough to commit genocide, but to set it to music, that's just sick. <laughs> And in footballing news, John Terry isn't appealing. I could have told you that. <laughs> Only 24% of people would rather host a house party than go to one. I like to party like it's 1999. Everything's a little bit cheaper and I'm not with my current girlfriend. <laughs> Quite funny, but she's gonna kill me. <laughs> the worst thing is when you turn up at a house party dressed as Batman and then you realise, A, it's not fancy dress, B, you haven't been invited. C, it's Christmas Eve. And D, she won't let you in to see your kids. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know, for example, 32% of Britons aged between 25 and 39 live at home with their parents? I guess that can be awkward sometimes. For instance, if you're a grown-up who's currently watching this with your parents, why don't you all just take a moment to imagine each other having sex? <laughs> <laughs> see? <laughs> awkward. <laughs> Only 1% of Brits don't own a TV. You know what I call people like that? Anything I like, they're not going to see this. <laughs> and 15% of men have never touched a vacuum cleaner. I've never touched a vacuum cleaner. In fact, I've literally no idea how it got up there. <laughs> the new Call of Duty computer game has been released. Call of Duty Black Ops 2 is the most exciting, futuristic, slick, engrossing, brutal Hollywood-produced reason you're still a virgin at 30 ever. <laughs> Uh, but in other news, the CIA has been rocked by revelations that its chief, General Petraeus, had an affair. General Petraeus was betrayed by private emails. Private emails is now facing court-martial. <laughs> this is the most disappointing thing to happen in the American espionage community since Brody's wife stopped getting her norks out in Homeland. <laughs> and the Church of England have announced the Bishop of Durham is to become the new Archbishop of Canterbury. He's made up, as is, his religion. <laughs> Did you know, for example, nine out of ten children visit McDonald's once a month? What's that thing that all the kids get in McDonald's? Oh, yeah, fat. <laughs>
68% of men start conversations with strangers while queuing for the toilet. I wish people would just mind their peas and queue. <laughs> 27% of people keep a weapon by the bed to protect themselves against intruders. I don't have a weapon. Instead, I sleep in stockings and suspenders. <laughs> then if I'm burgled, I just throw back the covers and say, what kept you? <laughs> Apple have announced the release of the new iPad Mini. Experts think the iPad Mini will be the most popular gift this Christmas, so if you work in a Chinese sweatshop, that tea break might just have to wait. <laughs> The news. Conservative Chief Whip Andrew Mitchell has resigned after being accused of calling police officers plebs. People say pleb is the worst thing he could have called a policeman. Of course, they've forgotten about scum, peeler, plod, pig, bacon, rosa, five-o, <laughs> filth, dibble, busy, fuzz, tithead and <laughs> <laughs> And a Brazilian student has sold her virginity this week for half a million pounds. I'm not a prostitute, said the 20-year-old Brazilian prostitute. <laughs> Did you know, for example, 48% of men in long-term relationships don't know their own clothes size? Although, if you've been in a relationship more than five years, chances are it's extra large. <laughs> Only 2% of the Earth's population are natural redheads, so technically it wouldn't be genocide, more of a tidy-up. <laughs> <laughs> and 94% of men consider themselves romantic. I'm really romantic. I often stand under my girlfriend's window and serenade her with my guitar. I say my girlfriend, it's the woman next door. I say serenade, I mean stare. And also, that's not a guitar I'm holding. <laughs> yes, the X Factor is heating up. Apparently, Rylan had eight bum notes last Sunday, each handed to him by Louis, saying, meet me in the dressing room after. <laughs> Have you written a book? Yeah, I've written a book, yeah. An autobiography? No, God, no. If I've learned anything, it's the less that people know about me, the better. <laughs> no, it's just a book about jokes. About jokes? Yeah, not... I mean, not, not an amazing... It's not, it's not as good as... It's not as good as this book. <laughs> Personally, I don't care if a book's been written by a celebrity like Rod Stewart or Simon Cowell or a member of the public like Kerry Katona. <laughs> Did you know, for example, the average mum has one hour a day to themselves? That's the thing with mums, selfish. 25% <laughs> of lap dancers have university degrees. Yes, most of them... <laughs> Carol there, just getting the last joke. Or remembering something that happened earlier in her life, who knows? 25% <laughs> of lap dancers have university degrees. Yes, most of them have a tutu and a French maid's outfit and a police uniform. <laughs> and 20% of Brits have travelled abroad with their pet, which rises to 98% of Geordies. Come on, pet, where are we on holidays? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, the competition for Strictly Come Dancing is heating up. Lisa Riley's odds have gone from 66 to 1 to 10 to 1. Mmm, she thought, 10 to 1, lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> but in other news, cyclist Bradley Wiggins has been knocked off his bike by a motorist. Bradley Wiggins was rushed to hospital where he was immediately stabilised by adding two smaller wheels to his big back wheel. <laughs> It's been revealed the Prime Minister and Rebecca Brooks exchanged intimate text messages. Our lawyers have been very strict on this one, so with that in mind, I'd just like to say Rebecca Brooks is a blanking ginger blank, who blanked for Rupert Murdoch, blanked to the Levinson Inquiry, blanked to the police, and once even blanked a horse while David Cameron stood by blanking. <laughs> and in India this week, 50 elephants went on a drunken rampage after drinking 500 litres of moonshine. In other news, a hen party from Wigan has gone missing. <laughs> Did you know, for example, 25% of children aren't allowed to play conkers at school? I wasn't allowed to touch my conkers at school. Apparently, it was putting off the netball team. 13% <laughs> of people have been visited by a dead person. Or, to put it another way, 13% of people have fallen asleep thinking about their nan. <laughs> A survey's revealed lap dancers pay four times as much for car insurance as nurses, presumably because lap dancers are more at risk of being rear-ended. <laughs> the Church of England have refused to allow female bishops, denying male bishops the thing they so desperately wanted. Poontang on tap. <laughs> Did you know, for example, over 1.6 million Britons still live at home with their parents? And we call those people children. <laughs> It takes giraffes up to an hour to have sex, but most of that is necking. <laughs> and
And 65% of people think Britain is a great place to live. And that's a survey of people hanging on to the undercarriage of the Eurostar. <laughs> Welcome your host, Jimmy Carr. Hello and welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, 16% of women say they lie about their age from time to time? And those times are between the ages of 28 and 53. 40% <laughs> of men would rather be single than bald. So, finally, some good news for Justin Lee Collins. <laughs> and 23% of people think they're more productive when they work from home. I know I am, but that's because I'm a self-employed erection checker. <laughs> but in other news, former Bosnian Serb leader Radovan Karadzic is on trial for orchestrating genocide. Bad enough to commit genocide, but to set it to music, that's just sick. <laughs> and in footballing news, John Terry isn't appealing. I could have told you that. <laughs> Only 24% of people would rather host a house party than go to one. I like to party like it's 1999. Everything's a little bit cheaper and I'm not with my current girlfriend. <laughs> Quite funny, but she's gonna kill me. <laughs> the worst thing is when you turn up at a house party dressed as Batman and then you realise, A, it's not fancy dress, B, you haven't been invited, C, it's Christmas Eve, and D, she won't let you in to see your kids. <laughs> Did you know, for example, 32% of Britons aged between 25 and 39 live at home with their parents? I guess that can be awkward sometimes. For instance, if you're a grown-up who's currently watching this with your parents, why don't you all just take a moment to imagine each other having sex? <laughs> See? <laughs> awkward. <laughs> Only 1% of Brits don't own a TV. You know what I call people like that? Anything I like, they're not going to see this. <laughs> And 15% of men have never touched a vacuum cleaner. I've never touched a vacuum cleaner. In fact, I've literally no idea how it got up there. <laughs> the new Call of Duty computer game has been released. Call of Duty Black Ops 2 is the most exciting, futuristic, slick, engrossing, brutal Hollywood-produced reason you're still a virgin at 30 ever. <laughs> Uh, but in other news, the CIA has been rocked by revelations that its chief, General Petraeus, had an affair. General Petraeus was betrayed by private emails. Private emails is now facing court martial. <laughs> this is the most disappointing thing to happen in the American espionage community since Brody's wife stopped getting her norks out in Homeland. <laughs> and the Church of England have announced the Bishop of Durham is to become the new Archbishop of Canterbury. He's made up, as is his religion. <laughs> 25% of people do their weekly online shop whilst in bed. I do. It helps me remember what we need. Meat, two veg, dumplings, a couple of baps. 83% <laughs> of British people admit to stealing something from a hotel room. I stayed in a hotel the other day. I decided to throw caution to the wind, opened up the mini bar, and I downed all the bottles of bubbly. And then I woke up and realised I was in a travel lodge and all the shampoo had disappeared. 30% <laughs> of Brits think it's acceptable to answer the phone during sex. It happens. Mum, it's for you. <laughs> Did you know, for example, nine out of ten children visit McDonald's once a month? What's that thing that all the kids get in McDonald's? Oh, yeah, fat. 68% <laughs> of men start conversations with strangers while queuing for the toilet. I wish people would just mind their peas and queue. <laughs> 27% of people keep a weapon by the bed to protect themselves against intruders. I don't have a weapon. Instead, I sleep in stockings and suspenders. <laughs> then if I'm burgled, I just throw back the covers and say, what kept you? <laughs> Apple have announced the release of the new iPad mini. Experts think the iPad mini will be the most popular gift this Christmas. So if you work in a Chinese sweatshop, that tea break might just have to wait. <laughs> The news. Conservative Chief Whip Andrew Mitchell has resigned after being accused of calling police officers plebs. People say pleb is the worst thing he could have called a policeman. Of course, they've forgotten about scum, peeler, plod, pig, bacon, rosa, five-o, <laughs> filth, dibble, busy, fuzz, tithead and <laughs> <laughs> And a Brazilian student has sold her virginity this week for half a million pounds. I'm not a prostitute, said the 20-year-old Brazilian prostitute. <laughs> 
Did you know, for example, by 2030, 26 million Brits will be obese? Did you know if they all jumped up and down at the same time, they might lose a little bit of bloody weight? <laughs> the average woman loses her virginity at 17. How's about that, then? <laughs> And 70% of men don't get enough fibre in their diet. Tough shit. <laughs> yes, the Tory party conference. David Cameron and Boris Johnson have been described as frenemies, although I prefer to think of them as frassholes. <laughs> the Tories say you'll now be able to attack burglars in your own home. If you ever try and burgle me, you're going to meet these two fellas. Please don't hurt me. <laughs> but in other news, Freddie Starr has denied any involvement in the Jimmy Savile scandal, but these allegations risk leaving Freddie's reputation completely unchanged. <laughs> and Cheryl Cole has revealed she needed vitamin jabs in her bum to cope after Ashley Cole's infidelity. I don't know if the jabs worked or not, but can I just say to Cheryl Cole's doctor, high five. <laughs> Only 16% of people are regularly embarrassed by their partner's behaviour. Walking in on someone on the toilet is embarrassing. I'm so sorry I'm late. <laughs> Did you know, for example, the average mum has one hour a day to themselves? That's the thing with mums. Selfish. 25% <laughs> of lap dancers have university degrees. Yes, most of them... <laughs> Carol there, just getting the last joke. Or remembering something that happened earlier in her life, who knows? 25% <laughs> of lap dancers have university degrees. Yes, most of them have a tutu and a French maid's outfit and a police uniform. <laughs> and 20% of Brits have travelled abroad with their pet, which rises to 98% of Geordies. Come on, pet, where are we on holidays? <laughs> great. Yeah. Yes, the competition for Strictly Come Dancing is heating up. Lisa Riley's odds have gone from 66 to 1 to 10 to 1. Mmm, she thought, 10 to 1, lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> but in other news, cyclist Bradley Wiggins has been knocked off his bike by a motorist. Bradley Wiggins was rushed to hospital where he was immediately stabilised by adding two smaller wheels to his big back wheel. <laughs> been revealed the Prime Minister and Rebecca Brooks exchanged intimate text messages. Our lawyers have been very strict on this one, so with that in mind, I'd just like to say Rebecca Brooks is a blanking ginger blank, who blanked for Rupert Murdoch, blanked to the Levinson Inquiry, blanked to the police, and once even blanked a horse while David Cameron stood by blanking. <laughs> <laughs> and in India this week, 50 elephants went on a drunken rampage after drinking 500 litres of moonshine. In other news, a hen party from Wigan has gone missing. <laughs> Did you know, for example, 25% of children aren't allowed to play conkers at school? I wasn't allowed to touch my conkers at school. Apparently, it was putting off the netball team. 13% <laughs> of people have been visited by a dead person. Or, to put it another way, 13% of people have fallen asleep thinking about their nan. <laughs> And a survey's revealed lap dancers pay four times as much for car insurance as nurses, presumably because lap dancers are more at risk of being rear-ended. <laughs> the Church of England have refused to allow female bishops, denying male bishops the thing they so desperately wanted. Poontang on tap. <laughs> Did you know, for example, 48% of men in long-term relationships don't know their own clothes size? Although, if you've been in a relationship more than five years, chances are it's extra large. <laughs> Only 2% of the Earth's population are natural redheads, so technically it wouldn't be genocide, more of a tidy-up. <laughs> <laughs> and 94% of men consider themselves romantic. I'm really romantic. I often stand under my girlfriend's window and serenade her with my guitar. I say my girlfriend, it's the woman next door. I say serenade, I mean stare. And also, that's not a guitar I'm holding. <laughs> yes, the X Factor is heating up. Apparently, Rylan had eight bum notes last Sunday, each handed to him by Louis, saying, meet me in the dressing room after. <laughs> Have you written a book? Yeah, I've written a book, yeah. An autobiography? No, God, no. If I've learnt anything, it's the less that people know about me, the better. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just a book about jokes. About jokes? Yeah, not... I mean, not, not an amazing... It's not, it's not as good as... It's not as good as this book. <laughs> Personally, I don't care if a book's been written by a celebrity like Rod Stewart or Simon Cowell or a member of the public like Kerry Katona. <laughs>
did you know, for example, over 1.6 million Britons still live at home with their parents? And we call those people children. <laughs> it takes giraffes up to an hour to have sex, but most of that is necking. <laughs> and 65% of people think Britain is a great place to live. And that's a survey of people hanging on to the undercarriage of the Eurostar. <laughs> Did you know, for example, 30% of people would consider moving abroad after a holiday? I read about two girls who recently went on holiday to Peru, and they liked it so much they're staying for six to eight years. <laughs> and 23% of Brits have never visited France, which means they've never experienced the thrill of sitting in a cafe on the Champs Elysees and being put off their croissant by the sight of a woman's hairy armpits and the smell of dog shit. <laughs> Right, let's get started. Yes, Sinead O'Connor has angrily criticised Miley Cyrus for her raunchy video. It was shocking seeing Miley Cyrus on stage at the MTV Awards in a skimpy outfit rubbing herself up against a penis, or Robin Thicke, as he's otherwise known. <laughs> yes, Tesco has revealed the extent of food wastage in the country. According to the survey, 53% of food in this country goes to waste. The rest goes to hips and bums. Right, girls? <laughs> Did you know, for example, 80% of obese people say they've got no idea how much they should be eating? Here's a clue. Less than that. 30% <laughs> of people say their favourite meal hasn't changed since childhood. My favourite meal's still the same. Sucking on boobies. Right, Mum? <laughs> and 18% of the population has sleepwalked. My girlfriend's a terrible sleepwalker. A few weeks ago, she sleepwalked out of the house, sleep met up with her ex-boyfriend, they sleep shagged, and now she sleep left me. When she wakes up, she's gonna be so embarrassed. <laughs> yes, Miley Cyrus caused controversy, allegedly smoking marijuana on stage at the MTV Music Awards, although I saw the footage of Miley and I think I could see a better crack. <laughs> Things get out of hand so quickly. I once heard of a girl who lied to her husband about how she got pregnant, and now there's an entire religion. <laughs> yes, yeah. so a new series of X Factor is underway. Dermot O'Leary says millions of X reviewers have tuned in in order to see his trouser bulge. Oh, Dermot, put a sock in it. Oh, wait, hang on, you have. <laughs> Yes, only 31% of people find driving a stressful experience. I'll tell you what stresses me out, those white van drivers. They think they own the bloody road with their flashing blue lights. <laughs> Calm down, mate, there's an accident up ahead. We've all got to wait. <laughs> Did you know, for example, students have to apply for an average of 24 jobs before they find a position. Things are tough out there. I met a guy recently who told me he had a first with honours, an MA and a PhD. I said, that's great, but I asked you for a burger without pickle. <laughs> 72% of people find spending time with animals relaxing. I like having dogs around, but my girlfriend objects to all the licking of balls and sniffing of bums. She says it upsets the dogs. <laughs> and 40% of men worry about getting fat. There's a simple test for men. Look down at your stomach. If it's flat, you've got nothing to worry about. If it's sticking out a bit, you might need to go on a diet. And if you can't see your stomach because your boobs are getting in the way, you've got a problem. <laughs> I like spending time with my favourite animal in my basement. It's a sort of centipede. I made it myself. It was a lot of work and it's a bit messy, makes a hell of a noise, but it was worth it. <laughs> yes, the hardest job is a teacher. All the teachers at my school were very strict. I remember every Monday morning I had to give the deputy head. <laughs> yes, the worst thing about living alone is having no one to talk to. There's an old man who lives alone next door to me. Still, he's just bought himself a new dog for company. I think he's called it Help, because I keep on hearing him calling it. Help! 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 <laughs> Don't worry, though. I think the dog's come back, because I haven't heard him shouting anything in ages. <laughs> Fancy set up a secret stall in New York and sold his artwork for just $60. There hasn't been a discount on art this big since Rolf Harris was arrested. <laughs> so those were the most talked about things this week. But in other news, the US debt crisis has been resolved. Americans are going to have to tighten their belts, which won't be easy for them, as most of them are wearing elasticated trousers. <laughs> British gas has put up prices by 10%. Our only hope of beating the energy crisis now is to build more wind farms and to switch exclusively to Mexican food. <laughs> and it's been revealed this week that the Soviet Union once ran up a huge debt to New Zealand after importing massive quantities of butter. I'm not sure where the Soviets kept all this butter, but I'm guessing in the middle of Kiev. <laughs> Did you know, for example, 
43% of men flirt with people behind their partner's backs. I have to confess, I sometimes flirt with people without telling my girlfriend, but it doesn't mean anything, it's just a bit of harmless banter in the steam room of a gay sauna. It's nothing. <laughs> 11% of single women have already picked out their wedding dress. It's an important decision. It's a lot of money to spend on a dress you're only going to wear never. <laughs> <laughs> and video game controllers have five times the amount of germs found on a toilet seat. It's their own fault for giving them that vibrate function. <laughs> Strictly Come Dancing has started again. In the first episode of this series of Strictly, everyone agreed Abby Clancy stole the show. Typical Scouser. <laughs> Channel 4's new show, Sex Box, aired this week. If I want to have sex in a small, windowless box, devoid of any romance or sexual excitement, I'll book me and my girlfriend into a travel lodge. <laughs> Strictly Come Dancing continues. One of the celebrities, Patrick Robinson, is from Casualty. His dance starts well, but halfway through he starts climbing a stepladder to hang Christmas lights over a bath, and you think this isn't going to end well. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know, for example, 1.5 million Britons would like to be buried with their mobile phone? And if you answer it when you're sitting behind me in the cinema, you will be. <laughs> One in 20 people have held a party for their cat's birthday. Even the cat's thinking, this is a bit tragic. <laughs> 22% of nightclub hookups are one night stands. Yeah, who would have thought the guy you tugged off in a toilet cubicle two minutes after meeting him in Hollywood's nightclub Romford wouldn't turn out to be the love of your life? <laughs> but if you are watching, Darren, call me. <laughs> yes, the Plebgate Row has intensified this week. Andrew Mitchell's always disputed the police's version of events, saying, I 100% deny calling those pricks plebs. <laughs> The Tory party conference. The conference started with a short film about Margaret Thatcher, which got a standing ovation. To be fair, it has got a brilliant ending. <laughs> yes, Britain's youth have scored amongst the lowest in international literacy and numeracy tests. How do you expect Britain's teenagers to learn to read and write? They're too busy bringing up their kids. <laughs> Those were the most talked about things this week. But in other news, Silvio Berlusconi is set to carry out 12 months of community service, although, unfortunately, the community he's chosen is a Catholic girls' school. <laughs> and this week, a Bristol woman of 85 got her first ever tattoo. She had the Grim Reaper on her shoulder, watching as she got a tattoo of a dolphin. <laughs> yes, the Great British Bake Off was the most talked about thing this week. Bake Off's not been a great success in America, of course, over there. It's a dieting show. <laughs> yes, men's biggest worries are putting on weight and going grey. Either way, the solution is the same. Diet. <laughs> yes, David Cameron has reshuffled his cabinet. David Cameron denies putting more women in the cabinet is mere tokenism. The promotions are Minister for Hoovering, Helen Grant, <laughs> and Nicky Morgan, the new Minister for Total Sexiness. <laughs> Did you know, for example, 36% of people think the best way to dump someone is over the phone. Please press 1 for it's not you, it's me. 2 for we can still be friends, and 3 for I'm sorry, I've got your mum pregnant. 25% <laughs> of men pretend to be asleep if they hear a strange noise in the night. I can't get to sleep sometimes because there's this strange bzzz, bzzz, bzzz. I asked my girlfriend, is there a fly in here? And she said, yes, yes, yes! <laughs> And 73% of dieters abandon their diet at the weekend. And there's a special name for those dieters. Fat people. <laughs> yes, the badger cull's been extended, as they say they haven't killed enough animals. The aim of the cull was to stop the spread of bovine TB and to distract Brian May from making any more music. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Alex Ferguson's autobiography was released this week. In the book, Ferguson is scathing about David Beckham, Roy Keane and Wayne Rooney. If that lot ever learn to read, they'll be livid. <laughs> Did you know, for example, 10% of British people let their pets sleep in their bed? There's nothing more relaxing than waking up in the night to feel the weight of your dog on your chest, to feel his fur, hear his gentle panting, and sense his eyes staring at you in the darkness. <laughs> Until you realise, hang on a minute, I haven't got a dog. 54% <laughs> of teenagers never go to the cinema. Really? Where do they make their phone calls? <laughs> And 25% of Brits rate themselves 10 out of 10 in the bedroom. I'd give myself 9.9 .9 because I fell over on the dismount. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the top thing people wish they were better at is speaking foreign languages. We had a really great French teacher at my school, but in the end I failed the oral. Apparently I didn't cup les balls properly. 40% <laughs> of people regularly reward their pets with treats. 
Who's going to the vet for a lovely long sleep? <laughs> Who's going to the vet for a lovely long sleep? <laughs> 44% of Brits think that we should have a space programme. But Britain does have a space programme. Doctor Who. <laughs> and 27% of men play games on their mobile whilst in bed with their partner. I'm guessing Angry Birds, especially when she wants to play Snake. <laughs> yes, Simon Cowell has become a father for the first time. I was surprised Simon was at the birth of the child, because normally he doesn't like being in a room where he's not the biggest punchline removed for legal reasons. <laughs> So those were the most talked about things over the last week, but in other news, it's been revealed Tony Blair apparently advised Rebecca Brooks on the hacking scandal just before her arrest. Blair's main piece of advice was don't go out in the rain with that hair, it'll go all frizzy. <laughs> and a woman's been treated for burns in Barcelona after the toilet she was sitting on exploded. As she was carried out by emergency services, she whispered, I'd leave that five minutes if I were you. <laughs> Well, like if any of the proposed sugar tax is not in our top three, but they want to tax fizzy drinks because they're linked to obesity. Although, saying that, another study claims that fizzy drinks are good for you. And that was carried out by the eminent scientist, Dr Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> the EU referendum debate's not one of the most talked about things over the last week, but... Ed Miliband says if Labour win the next election, they won't call for a referendum on Britain's EU membership unless Britain was asked to transfer more powers to Brussels, which I think you'll agree is about as clear as Eric Pickle's piss. <laughs> I can tell you, pubs is not one of Britain's greatest contributions to the world, but the oldest existing pub in Britain was built in the 8th century. We don't know much about it, but we do know the barman was a guy called Skip from Brisbane, who was just working there so he could get some money together to bum around Europe. <laughs> Norwich has the politest drivers in the UK. Well, it's difficult to be rude when virtually everyone you meet is a close relative. <laughs> The oldest paperboy in Britain is Bernard Davies from Brighton. He's 90 years old. Sorry, we just had an update. The oldest paperboy in Britain is Gavin Henderson from Sunderland. He's 12. <laughs> and 51% of women do not groom or style their pubic hair. 51%, that means statistically, either your mum or your nan is rocking a Brazilian. <laughs> Yes, floods have been devastating parts of the UK. Eric Pickles was the first minister to apologise for the flooding. He filled his bath too high and when he got in, Somerset flooded. <laughs> yes, Gwyneth Paltrow and Chris Martin are splitting up. In the press release, Chris Martin and Gwyneth Paltrow said they were consciously uncoupling as opposed to unconsciously uncoupling, which is just when it accidentally slips out. <laughs> So those were the most talked about things over the last week, but in other news, it's been announced Nick Clegg and Nigel Farage will take part in a televised debate. Now we can finally get the answer to the question British voters really want answered. Who would win in a fight between a prick and an asshole? <laughs> Legoland was closed at the weekend due to a terror threat. What's the big deal? They could just put it back together. <laughs> And a man in Lincolnshire has been found guilty of having sex with a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. <laughs> Someone must have squealed. My money is on the dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you, the voice is not in our top three. But after seven weeks of blind auditions where the judges turn their chairs round, the show's moved on to the battle phase, where viewers turn the channel over. <laughs> The winner of the first series of The Voice, Leanne Mitchell, is already the answer to Britain's hardest pub quiz question. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Valentine's Day was on Friday. It's estimated six million people popped the question on Valentine's Day. And that question was, can we have a threesome? <laughs> yes, the trial of Oscar Pistorius continues. This is all just part of Oscar Pistorius' plan to become president of South Africa. He just needs to do 25 years in prison first. <laughs> of course, Oscar Pistorius shot his girlfriend last Valentine's Day, so if my girlfriend's watching, suddenly a box of chocolates and flowers from the garage don't look so bad, do they? <laughs> Kate, William and George are currently on a royal tour. Kate and William took part in the traditional Maori greeting of Hongi, which is done by pressing one's forehead against the nose of another. It's also the traditional greeting in Glasgow, although there they do it with much more force. <laughs> According to a survey, one in three men live at home. That's nonsense. Everyone lives at home. <laughs> one in four Americans have appeared on TV. I'm assuming widescreen. <laughs> and... 55% of people think being associated with charity work makes you seem more attractive, which explains why Pudsy Bear gets all that poontang. 
In September, Scotland will face a referendum on independence in which they'll be asked to either vote OK or OK NO. <laughs> Thirty-four percent of people do think they've got a great idea for a business. I'm involved in a business venture that is going to make me millions just as soon as my Nigerian friend emails me back. <laughs> <laughs> well, Justin Bieber's not one of the most talked about things, but Michael Jackson earned $160 million last year and he's dead. I'm just throwing that out there in case anyone's watching from Justin Bieber's record company. <laughs> Of course, the greatest pop band in history are the Beatles. They came from Liverpool, although you'll already know that if you've ever spoken to anyone from Liverpool for more than seven seconds. <laughs> Forty percent of British people can't identify bird songs. It's simple. It's usually either I Will Survive by Gloria Gaynor or Independent <laughs> Women by Destiny's Child. <laughs> Fifteen percent of Brits think Downton Abbey is the best TV show ever made, and that is a survey of your nan. <laughs> 33% of people don't know how to tie a necktie. It's easy. Just wrap it round your neck twice, tuck it in the hole and pull it tight. Unless you're Piers Morgan, in which case, follow the same steps, but first, attach it to a light fitting. <laughs> My girlfriend asked me to knock something up in the kitchen, and now our cleaner's pregnant. <laughs> the Winter Olympics in Sochi finished yesterday. After winning the gold medal, Lizzie Yarnold changed her Twitter name to Lizzie Yarn Gold. She was congratulated by her fellow British Olympians, Barry Loser and Dave Last Place. 7% <laughs> of women count sex as a part of their exercise regime. While well, they do when they're with me, all that running away keeps you pretty fit. 54% <laughs> of published authors earn less than £600 a year. If that's you, here's a tip. Try writing a story about a boy wizard who likes his billionaire boss to tie him up and piss on him. You'll make a killing. <laughs> And 3% of people claim they can speak fluent Welsh. If that's you, you can go, go, go fuck yourself. <laughs> the Winter Paralympics in Sochi finished yesterday, although Putin has vowed the shooting event will continue until Ukraine surrenders. <laughs> There's been a revolution in the Ukraine. Thousands of protesters gathered in Kiev's independent square. Here's a tip for dictators watching. Don't have a square. And if you do have a square, don't call it independent square. Call it, everything's fine, move along, <laughs> nothing to see square. <laughs> of course, traditional Irish dancers have their hands by their sides at all times because their arms have been decommissioned. <laughs> Well, I can tell you Nick Clegg and Nigel Farage debating Europe is not in our top three. But their next debate is taking place on BBC Two and not, as I hoped, on a burning platform suspended over a pool of dog shit. 84% <laughs> uh, of people would use personal contacts to help their child get a job. I hate nepotism. In fact, I'm the chairman of the Anti-Nepotism League, an organisation set up in the 80s by my father. <laughs> The word dog appears just 14 times in the Bible, but loads more than that if you read it backwards. <laughs> and a survey's revealed Sunday is the loneliest day for pensioners. If you're a pensioner, don't worry. Someone will be popping round on Monday to cut your heating off. <laughs> yes, the best way to impress your in-laws is to make them laugh. Number nine on the list is admire their house. Oh, this is lovely. I look forward to inheriting this when you're dead. <laughs> Yes, the biggest sign your vein is always looking in the mirror. I've got one of those circus mirrors that makes you look all misshapen and disgusting with a massive paunch and a tiny cock. At least I think it's the mirror. 30% <laughs> of English language students think learning to spell is unnecessary because of autocorrect. Stupid aunts. <laughs> yes, the countdown for the World Cup has started. I actually think England have a good chance of winning the World Cup, unless, and this could happen, any of the other teams turn up. <laughs> but seriously, why stand around in a noisy club getting shunned by attractive women when you can go on Tinder and get turned down in the comfort of your own home? <laughs> yes, the top adrenaline rush is going on a roller coaster because nothing gets the heart pumping like travelling 40 feet above the ground in a metal coffin maintained by a 12-year-old scrap metal dealer with tattoos. <laughs> How was I supposed to hide the fact I lost my virginity from my mum? She was there. <laughs> Sorry, not my mum, John's mum. <laughs> the average pub landlord is two stone overweight. That's nuts. 
and beer and crisps and lager and pork scratchings. <laughs> Border Collies are the most intelligent dogs. Yes, when it comes to chasing their own tails, shitting on driveways and sniffing each other's asses, <laughs> Border Collies truly are the Einsteins. <laughs> And men in the northeast think putting out the bins is the most romantic modern gesture. And why not? For most couples in Newcastle, it was where they had their first date. <laughs> yes, the crisis in Ukraine continues. Despite the tensions, the centre of Kiev has returned to normal. A big pool of delicious garlicky butter. <laughs> I suppose it does depend on your definition of fun. If you mean getting drunk and acting like an idiot, then that's not me. But if your idea of fun is a disappointing evening, followed by awkward sex, apologies and crying, then I'm a really fun guy. 35% <laughs> percent of Americans think British accents are attractive. Well, jolly nice of you to say so, fatty. 19% <laughs> of people who bought Katie Price's latest book, Love, Lipstick and Lies, haven't read it yet. Fine. We haven't read it. She didn't write it. Everyone's happy. <laughs> And 86% of Brits can't name five C's around the world. It's easy. President Putin, he's a massive C. David Cameron, <laughs> he's a right C. Whoever's running Iran at the moment, total C. Kim Jong-un, absolute C. And Piers Morgan, what a C. <laughs> well, I can tell you manners is not in our top three, but... Different cultures have different rules. In Thailand, the rudest thing you can do is show someone the soles of your feet. I'm not entirely sure that's true. I've been to Thailand and you could do much ruder things. <laughs> Maria Miller has resigned as culture secretary. Maria Miller initially apologised to the house and then issued another apology, presumably, to her second house. <laughs> so those were the most talked about things over the last week. But in other news, Michael Gove has announced plans to make GCSEs harder. Right now, the hardest thing in the exam hall is the boys from 4C when Madame Genevieve, the French teacher, bends over to pick up her pencil. <laughs> Michael Gove wants to make the school day longer, which would mean that from now on, in a massive change, teachers would have to work up to eight hours a year. <laughs> Did you know, for example, the average mum has one hour a day to themselves? That's the thing with mums, selfish. 25% <laughs> of lap dancers have university degrees. Yes, most of them... <laughs> Carol there, just getting the last joke. Or remembering something that happened earlier in her life. Who knows? 25% <laughs> of lap dancers have university degrees. Yes, most of them have a tutu and a French maid's outfit and a police uniform. <laughs> have you ever illegally downloaded anything? I don't think so, no, but I do download apps, but I pay for those all the time. I oh, love the apps. Illegal. You're loving the apps, I'm yeah. I'm loving the apps on the iPhone. My favourite is iFart at the moment. I know it's childish, but it's cause me I fart. Laughs what does that 49p. do? 49p. It's great. It's great. It's 49p? You could have brought sprouts. <laughs> Downloaded iPods. Oh. It's got all the different sounds and they've given it like squelcher, squeezer, rabbit thingy, da da da. And they're all different fast sounds. Do? You're the real Carol Vorderman. Did we book the wrong. Because <laughs> I wanted really, to bring the clever really one funny. off the show with the numbers. So, so Who did we book? Who's she? <laughs> uh, Jason's team, what do you think they've been talking about this week? Exciting VAT news. Yeah. Oh. Two and a half percent has come off VAT. Yeah. That's right. What are we even still doing here? Let's get to the shops. Come on. Let's do it I mean, we are going to rush out, obviously, because something that cost £100 uh, last week, next week it's going to cost, wait for it, £97.87. Uh, I'm very excited about the two and a half percent. Are you? That's yes, marvellous. Because I can finally get that kettle I've had my eye on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's very tempting me, but I've always gone... Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Is it one that's got the light on, that when you switch it on, it goes red when it boils and then one. it if goes like. to blue? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, your team to go first. What do you think people use the internet for? Uh, you're, well, Carol, you're on the internet. I'm on the internet all the time. i tell you what I do. I shop on the internet. I buy absolutely everything on the internet. Okay, you're not worried about fraud and all that sort of stuff? No. You're not worried about people nicking mm, your no. identity and that? No. I bet your password is proper confusing, though, isn't it? <laughs> you've got an amazing password that you've actually got to solve three sums to get the password. <laughs> Carol, do you like a fancy dress party? I love a fancy dress party. What's, what's the best outfit you've ever, you've ever rocked? <laughs> well, when I had my last big fancy dress party, oh, it was fantastic. You host? Yeah. Oh, you host them, I love yeah, them. Yeah, 70s. Sure, yeah. It was fantastic. Amazing. I had an Afro wig that was that big and a little toga 
something and some very <laughs> high <laughs> silver boots and it was oh we had the blast it was fabulous i really enjoyed that party it was brilliant and, yeah, I, I wasn't invited no, but I know. <laughs> uh, john fern carol what have the nation been talking about this week Lots of different things, haven't they? Yeah, well, my well decision. Done, uh... <laughs> I mean, that's. We could probably just end round one there, can we? <laughs> Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Yes. Well, you're a, you're a mum. I am a mum, you... and I actually have a mother as well. Yeah, which is remarkable. <laughs> um... Fascinating stuff. We're all. <laughs> We chat about all sorts of things, my mother and I. Do you want yeah. the weirdest conversation you've had with your mum? Uh, well, it was actually last week because I, I got my uh, daughter picked her up from uni, and we went into Nana's and Is Nana's like Nando's. <laughs> no, Nana, Nana's my mum. Oh, okay, Nana's course, my mum. Yeah. And she got her iPad out, and my daughter goes, "What's that, Nan?" She said, "You're on Facebook, Nana. That's my account." And my mum is stalking my, my daughter's Facebook account. She says, oh, no, I've got hundreds of friends on it. She said, no, they're my friends, Nana. They're not your friends, they're your my Your Nana friends. is stalking your daughter as well. Uh, <laughs> 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 we should get together said, and talk. She said, she said, oh, I go to bed half an hour early and I read up about all these different people. What's this thing here? I think she might mean uh, Tinder. <laughs> No. Facing. no, 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 yes, yes. <laughs> Carol, were you pleased that they stayed? Well, I just thought it's up to them, really. And, you know, things change, don't they? Things develop. Are you breaking up with me? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of time to move on, Jimmy. Don't worry, I've still got the photos. Um... <laughs> an odd percentage of people that wanted to go, isn't it? Because it was, yeah. as much as it was, you know, was yeah. it 54%, it's almost half. They kept saying, we won safely, like, it doesn't yeah. feel very but safe. If you yeah. had five kids and you went down for breakfast one morning, they went, we had a vote in the morning, two of us want to kill you in our sleep. <laughs> <laughs> the other three are all right with it. So, <laughs> but we're not going to tell you which wants which. We shouldn't give away the result of the referendum because some people might have taped it. <laughs> Carol, would you ever go into the jungle? What would it, what would it take? No, I wouldn't go into the jungle. Do you get offered it every year? Yeah. Every Should year I tell you how much they offered me yeah, this yeah, year? Yeah, 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 of course. £250,000. £250,000? And you went, no, I'm not doing it, not no. worth it. Can I go dressed I'll go as tomorrow. you? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was £250,000. I'm not very good with numbers. 25. <laughs> I used to be on the Wide Awake Club, and obviously Timmy was one of them, uh, one of the presenters. And um, this I used is to do my favourite ever. Saturday Before you even start, this is my favourite ever name drop story. <laughs> <laughs> one of my best friends. <laughs> yeah, Timmy Mallet. Yeah, we hang out. Whatever. <laughs> There's a gentleman in Bristol who has been his agent for 27 years, and, and he's been mine for 22 years. Busy job. Years. <laughs> 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 Can you imagine that? When the phone goes, what's that noise? <laughs> <laughs> John Steen, what do you think the nation have been talking about this week? Sex box? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Matt, you seem genuinely excited. Sex box, tell me all about it. They have sex in a box, the cameras aren't in the box, so you can't see. And c consenting couples go in there, and they have sex, and then they come out, and then there's a panel of experts, and then they just sit there, and they get asked about what happened in there, and they say, yeah, we did it. No, no, no. I want to know more about this, because I haven't actually seen this... It's like a porno version of the cube. <laughs> right. They should do it in the cube, don't they? They should be able to see what they're getting up to. Yeah. The only time I've ever spent an evening with a football was a long, long, long uh, time ago. Tell me everything. <laughs> no, no, no. I just happened to be standing next to a footballer, and there were a lot of girls who were handing their number to him and all sorts of things to him. And were you adding up all the numbers and dividing them? <laughs> <laughs> OK, your related question. 63% of women avoid exercise because they think it makes them look stupid. Yeah. True or false? Jimmy, can I just point out that when they cut your shot up, the only words in that are look stupid <laughs> above your head. <laughs> your DVD Christmas as well and you quite rightly you know they offer you things that yeah. you think would be associated and there's an inflatable bondage chair that came up online <laughs> but uh, well, sadly... there must have been some other things that you bought no. as well <laughs> I'll tell you what you would love they were also offering mind camp <laughs> <laughs> You might like Mein Kampf. It's a book by a young writer called Adolf Hitler. Nine, nine, nine. <laughs> it is the recommendations is an odd thing because it's sort of I don't mind buying stuff on Amazon, but when when the recommendations come up, I do sometimes think, is that me? I've got to change. <laughs>
<laughs> I quite like Chris Martin. I quite like Gwyneth. What do you make of Gwyneth? Me? Yeah, what do you make oh, of Gwyneth? Oh, I don't know. I've, like most people, I think it's just a bit smug and sort of pain in the ass, really. I would say. <laughs> Are you moving in there, Carol? What do you mean? You're moving in on Chris? Mm, no. It's a, bit, it's a bit too old for me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Is it the, um, the spate of people tipping ice buckets oh, over Oh, ice heads? bucket challenge. The ALS ice bucket challenge. Did you do it? I, well, I did, yeah, I did do it, but instead of ice water, I had sort of warm water, and instead of tipping it, I sort of climbed into it. <laughs> I had a lovely bath. <laughs> yeah. Carol, you did it, didn't you? I've did done you it, yeah, I did it. Carol Vorderman did do it, yeah, in, in some style, I would say. Should we take a look at Carol's? Yes. Yeah. You. Red Arrows nominated me. The Red Arrows nominated... What, all oh. of them? All of them, cos they did it the That's, night before. There's going to be a story here. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a second. Yeah. Well, they were all sitting in formation, apparently, the night before, and had... <laughs> <laughs> so they were sitting in formation, yeah. And tipped over them. Right. <laughs> and then they had to nominate... You oh. had to nominate two yeah, yeah, people sure. or something, OK? So they said they nominated the Chief of Air Staff, Prince Harry, and me. Oh. And I thought, oh, God. And that, kind of, that video went everywhere, and I thought, well, I can't not do it now, can mm. I, really? No, and it's a real compliment. Out of anyone they could have chosen, they chose you. They chose what me, What did yeah. you do to piss off the red arrows? <laughs> <laughs> All right, not that. Um, is it trapdoor comparison websites? What's that? You know, trapdoorsupermarket.com. But you could just look at different trapdoors and decide which is the best one to buy. <laughs> Is it, uh, well, it's porn, isn't it? I didn't want to say it, but... Prawns! No, Prawn. prawns. prawns. Not prawns, no. Um. <laughs> I was going to say, that's a bit specialist, Carol. <laughs> it's got, I think it's porn, in it? I mean, the only, the only one I've seen recently is, um... I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, you don't know, but... No, I was just like... <laughs> no, cos yeah, when I knew we were doing the digital special, I thought, well, it's research, isn't it? So, um... <laughs> Jason, come on, we're doing the show, man. <laughs> Say. There's nothing. There's nothing more difficult than trying to close a screen when your wife comes into the room. That, that little cross at the top gets smaller and smaller. Because <laughs> you can't even look at it directly. Because you think I've got to keep eye contact with her so she doesn't look at the screen. You just go, "Hey, love, you're all right." I think it is it about there. <laughs> about there. Is it there? You're all right. I think it'd be fine. I, I think it's probably. I think it's probably men who use it. Do you more think it's men like, that use it? I don't one? think many women actually. Go looking. For... Yeah, I think there's a lot of stuff aimed specifically at because the thing about the internet pornography, as opposed to pornography as it used to be in wooded areas, mm. <laughs> <laughs> is where pornography used to live. Sure Someone would buy it in the news agent and then very kindly leave it in a wooded area for no, <laughs> and you would see a shimmer of porn Release on the horizon. <laughs> Release it back into the wild. <laughs> I think I'm the only one old enough to remember all the blackouts of power cuts in the 70s. Also, when they introduced electricity, that must have been a thrill. <laughs> 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 so what was it like? So in the 70s, of course, so we had... So in the, the 70s, you, you had... Well, we had uh, paraffin lamps and you had boxes of candles. No, I remember that. The thing is, these days would be much better because candles are more varied. Much better sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, OK, well, here's, a, here's a fun fact. In, in 2008, a two-day power cut in Holland led to a 44% increase in the birth rate. Now, that's because you like to keep warm, you see. You go to bed and keep warm. That's because mm. she can't get away. It's dark, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> You were an education czar at some stage. Well, you were a maths czar, weren't you? Uh, I did a maths report, yes, about two years ago. I was also involved in the introduction of the numeracy hour when Blair was Prime Minister and Blunkett was uh, education The secretary. numeracy hour? Yeah. What, countdown? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's got to be that thing that, that, that was about, about a year ago and then it stopped being something, which was the toggle. Everything was a toggle. You oh, suppose yeah. your USB thing, you had a toggle. A to... uh, dongle. Oh, dongle. Dongle, that was it, the, the dongle. dongle. See, you're yeah. so confused. I didn't know what it <laughs> Yeah, because they're hard. They don't dangle. The dongles don't dangle. They're actually hard, aren't they? Well, you put them in. Who's a dongle that? doesn't dangle because it's hard. <laughs> Have a look at this.
I absolutely love that because it's just got more umph about it. It's got more life about it than, you know, men normally do to women. It's yeah, like, but Carol, you should see the state of the shed they built. <laughs> get proposed to? Which time? <laughs> it was different in those days, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we were riding on the back of a hay cart. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say triceratops. <laughs> Carol, do you get stressed driving? Do I get stressed? Ride? No, I love I love driving. I love Top Gear. You know I love Top Gear. Should we look at Carol on Top Gear? Yeah. We'll have a little look. Now, the Liana. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, I just had a great day. I love the Stig. He was so good. And he taught me how to do handbrake turns today. Well, that's not going to make you go very fast. No, it isn't. No, Pulling isn't a handbrake it? on. No. Have you never done one before? No. So did that explain what happened when you were on one of your practice laps? <laughs> <laughs> the would last you, one, you... I was just pushing it a little too far. Who'd like to see what happened on one of the practice laps? Yeah. Here we go. Right, where are we now? Oh, it's oh, the follow-through. Oh, a bit wild. Ah! <laughs> oh, that was my last lap. That was quite oh, close. Oh, this is great. This one's great. <laughs> I have to say, I was fastest in the wet by four seconds. At fastest, that time. fastest in the in wet the by wet. four seconds. <laughs> I forgot to issue Carol with the list of words you cannot say to Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid wet is wrong. You just can't say it if it's well, raining. Jeremy you have argued to say it's and raining. he said it was only mildly moist. <laughs> <laughs> now you're pretty much reading out the list. I fell over last year. I fell down the stairs and I broke oh. my nose. Now that does not make life more exciting. Although, ka ching, Stan a stairlift advert. <laughs> <laughs> How did you fall down the stairs? Uh, I had high heels on and a rucksack. I always go around with high, high heels, heels and a rucksack. rucksack. Ooh, tell me more. <laughs> and you dress as a beef eater. <laughs> <laughs> no, I always have a rucksack. I don't like handbags, so I can put both hands in my pockets. So when I trip, so you can break your nose. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say if I maybe I'm too commonsensical, but if I am going down the stairs in high heels, I don't put my hands in my pockets. <laughs> <laughs> I think you look really nice, Jimmy. I think you wear like really nice tailored suits. You've done it, got your eight, like you look a lot different when you first started on telly, don't you? Say you look like you've you got all the I've got scrubbed all up well. You've always yeah. dressed smartly. I remember you what fifteen something years ago. Yeah. When you were Eamon Holmes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> most unattractive habit. I think, Jimmy, one of the most unattractive habits is when you're talking to a man and then he's just looking at you and not actually listening to what you say. So then when you ask him a question... <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> then when you ask him a question, oh. he says, pardon? What? what? <laughs> the German people will be very pleased to find out about this. <laughs> I think pleasure. it's when you're sitting on the toilet and you know you've got the toilet roll and it's got one bit is slightly lower than the other bit, mm. you know, because it's two ply. Someone's doing well. <laughs> <laughs> two ply. <laughs> <laughs> what you're meant to do is take the top bit over like that. Do you do this at home? And then you get it and then they all measure up and you rip that bit off. No, but then you get out of sync. No, no. Why are you shitting in the sink? <laughs> <laughs> Did you know, for example, women spend an average of 49 hours planning how they'll look on Christmas Day? What, overheated, drunk and crying? <laughs> Over Christmas, 90% of British families put up a Christmas tree and 10% put down a dog. <laughs> and 30% of office workers admit to seeing a colleague engaged in a romantic activity at a Christmas party. That is, if you consider photocopying your boobs a romantic activity. <laughs> Which I do, so keep sending them in. <laughs> Can you hear that? Can you hear oh. that, ladies and gentlemen? I think that might mean... I think that means Santa Claus is coming. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Nick Helm, our Santa Claus.
Hey, Santa. Hello. Is it a busy time of, of year for you, Santa Claus? Is it a busy time of year for me, is it, Jimmy? You taking the piss? <laughs> Just asking, is it? Yes, Jimmy, it's fucking busy right now. <laughs> Right, OK. Well, we were going to book you in the summer, but people weren't into it. <laughs> you're such a prick. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, how come you're here? Just tell us why you're here, well, I'm here because I'm going to ask a series of questions, and then if you get it right, you get a nice gift, and if you get it wrong, you get a pile of shit. So... Okay. <laughs> so we're going to do this. Good you're Christmassy. Happy? I'll stop talking over my bit. <laughs> Yes, spending time with the family is the best thing about Christmas Day. Some people say the most stressful thing about Christmas is deciding which side of the family to spend the day with. I'm lucky, really, because I'm an orphan. I mean, I wasn't until last Christmas, but they just pushed me a little bit too far. <laughs> yes, it's Christmas TV and film. I love Christmas TV. There's nothing better than sitting down to watch a film you've seen countless times before with people you can no longer stand. <laughs> Did you know 8% of millennials are offended by Christmas decorations? Snowflakes. <laughs> but also baubles and tinsel. <laughs> a third of Brits think Lapland is a fictional place. It's not. I've been, and as strip clubs go, it's actually all right. <laughs> and one in four Brits don't think snogging is cheating if it's under the mistletoe. But if that mistletoe is part of a vajazzle, it's a different story. <laughs> Yes, it's Christmas presents. <laughs> There's nothing that shows your gratitude for a gift more than those three magic words. Got the receipt? <laughs> yes, yeah! it's spending time with family. I like Trivial Pursuit because I always get the questions right. Shall we play Trivial Pursuit? No. Correct. 10% <laughs> of pet owners buy their pet an outfit for Christmas. I bought my puppies an outfit for Christmas. It was a duffel bag to go swimming in. <laughs> Nice pair. <laughs> it is clenched. You can crack walnut in that. I could crack a relax, walnut. Relax, relax. Drink it in, Bruno. That's what a real oh, man looks like. Oh, no. <laughs> can I just say, while he was drinking it in, I think a bit went on me. And... <laughs> Another, we're forming a boy band together. We are. <laughs> it's called One Erection. <laughs> Pretty weird being heckled from behind. <laughs> I'm actually used to it, Sean. 7% yeah. of people who give presents say it's the thought that counts, and generally the thought is, that'll do. <laughs> and 14% of Brits drink more than they intend to over Christmas, which isn't easy because they intend to get absolutely bloody shit-faced. <laughs> well, yes, the most common New Year's resolution is to lose weight. The top three resolutions are lose weight, uh, do more exercise and stop smoking. So the best thing to do is run down to the shops, buy some cigarettes and eat them. <laughs> of course it is, yes. Fourth on the list is drinking too much. It's always the same for me on Christmas Day. Start with a couple of beers, then a bottle of wine, then some mulled wine, cos it's Christmas, then a sherry, cos Grand's round, and then some breakfast. <laughs> Did you know 6% of Brits buy advent calendars containing alcoholic drinks? But I don't need a calendar to remind me to drink at Christmas. I just look at my family. 16% <laughs> of grandmothers say Christmas is the only time of year they get drunk and let their hair down. So it's not just Santa that comes but once a year, right, Grandad? <laughs> and 15% of Brits give their bin men a festive tip. Not me. I put the whole thing in. <laughs> Yes, it's Christmas presents. Last year, I got my girlfriend a puppy for Christmas. It was so cute. I even put it in a little box with a big bow on it. My mistake was sending it second class. <laughs> I like unusual presents. Last year, I bought my nan a lifetime supply of Werther's Originals, which turned out to be three packets of Werther's Originals. <laughs> Yes, Christmas television. You know, Bruno, I love a bit of ballroom on Christmas Day, and that's why I wear tracky bottoms. 
Yes, the worst thing to do at the office Christmas party is tell your boss what you really think of them. A popular tradition at the office Christmas party is kissing under the mistletoe. But be careful, it can lead to fingering under the boardroom table. 90% <laughs> of people think that Christmas is too commercialised. And there's a special name for those people, tight-fisted twats. <laughs> If you're watching, children, I don't want to spoil Christmas for you, but not only is Santa made up, so's Jesus. <laughs> and your dog didn't go and live on a farm. <laughs> different religions celebrate Christmas in different ways and at different times. Some people in the Middle East, for example, celebrate their Christmas on September the 11th. <laughs> Sorry, we've got a lot of Al-Qaeda in, have we? <laughs> and it takes up to 15 years to grow a six-foot Christmas tree, but just 30 seconds to lob it over the fence into your neighbour's garden on January 6th. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, our favourite Christmas tradition is Christmas dinner. Pigs in blankets are popular around my house at Christmas. That's my girlfriend and her sister watching TV in oh. a blanket. <laughs> Yeah, you can laugh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> so those were the top Christmas traditions. But Christmas is about much more than that. Last year, the lights in Oxford Street were turned on by Take That, as were hundreds of middle-aged women. <laughs> and when it comes to decorating the tree, there's nothing better than going up to the loft, dusting off that old box, bringing it down to the living room, opening it up, realising you've accidentally brought down your old porn mags, going back up to the loft, and half an hour later coming down with the Christmas decorations. <laughs> Did you know, for example, the Bible actually gives no date for Jesus' birthday, so Mary and Joseph probably just said it was December 25th, so they didn't have to buy him two sets of presents. <laughs> The average Brit takes 15 hours to finish their Christmas shopping, which begs the question, just how far do they live from the all-night garage? <laughs> and 52% of British people eat twice their recommended calorie intake every Christmas day. And that fact also works if you remove the word Christmas. <laughs> Yes, the top New Year's resolution is to lose weight. Millions of people resolve to lose weight in the UK every year. Although, if the chief executive of Greg's is watching, don't worry, I think you'll be able to ride it out for a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Christmas presents, of course. Last year, I bought my girlfriend a Hoover. She didn't want it, so it's just been gathering dust. 